who may be interested in collaboration with my research as well i have uh, five research papers uh, you may uh, come to visit my research gate profile or linkedin uh, it's all with my name so the agenda of today's talk is what really is iot a lot of people uh, hear iot and they're like oh this is this crazy uh, little thing uh, that we just hear in uh, podcasts or news or you know revolutionary tech articles so what really is iot how can iot be integrated to renewable energy sources renewable energy sources as you may already all know uh, are clean energy sources uh, that produce electricity from abundant uh, natural resources third up is what is road power generation this is one of uh, my expertise road power generation i have uh, done my uh, thesis my bachelor thesis sorry um in uh, road power generation i did a couple of projects and then i got them published in in uh, journals uh, for road power generation then we'll come to the studying part if you want to come to germany please uh, stay with me till then and then we will talk about why germany germany and iot and finally how you can get admission in germany and i i'm going to tell you uh, some tips and tricks that you should remember uh, if you want to come to germany there is a, some error okay i guess we'll have to do it like this well um iot basically uh, let me tell you until it is done loading iot is an interconnected network um, that involves sensors and other types of technologies to better human lives for example um, your phone has a google assistant in it it does not exactly use iot but it is uh, a mixture of um, iot and ai Uh, Naman, is my uh, uh, screen visible? Yes, yes, it's visible. Uh, I guess there is some issue with it, so I'll have to do it like this. It's it's sort of hanging. Oh, uh, is it? Yeah, yeah. There is some latency into it, but it's visible. Okay, wait a sec. um whose uh, mic is that please? one of your mic okay um naman once again i'm really sorry for this uh, there's some sort of error in my slides naman can you see the table of contents yes okay so uh, the outline of this presentation is as follows we'll just dig into it uh, we don't have much time so the introduction to iot as i already told you it is an interconnected network um, which can be connected to the internet and network devices so let's dig into some practical examples of what iot may offer um as you already have uh, uh, already have heard of the sustainable development goals of the united nations i'm going to talk about the sustainable development goals first 
as engineering students, uh, we all should uh, contribute to the society. And I'm a big advocate of contributing to the society. And I think as engineers, uh, there are four main goals that we should um, uh, participate in as well. Number seven, as um, you can, I guess, read, uh, is the affordability of clean energy. So the, the production of clean energy is in our domain. So if you are an electrical engineer, you will be working for some company for your country, and you should be able to uh, learn different techniques of how to produce clean energy. So clean energy sources, uh, clean energy sources are uh, renewable energy sources, and renewable energy uh, is in the uh, has you know. Uh, solar panels, wind power, and the third is road power generation technologies that we're going to uh, cover in our upcoming slides. Number nine, the industry innovation and infrastructure. That is up to electrical engineers as well, or computer graduates to automize the industry, to enhance the production of the industry. That's up to us as well. And finally, 11, uh, on point 11, the sustainable cities and development. So community, sorry. Uh, that is up to us as well. If you if we want to make sustainable cities, um, we just, uh, we have to uh, rely on IoT. And in turn, we have to be engineering graduates. And one last point that I would like uh, to mention that often gets neglected, and that is quality education. In the sustainable development goals, if, if, if we want to sustain in the society, if we want to develop in the society, we have to give quality education to our students, and I think uh, all our teachers are doing brill brilliantly. Um, Dr. Bishwajit is my mentor, my um, a, a very close uh, colleague of mine. Um, he's my teacher as well. I have learned a lot from him, and I think um, he is doing brilliantly in uh, uh, completing these uh, 17 sustainable development goals in which domain he may can. So we talk, we're, going, we're going to talk about smart homes. Um, you may have already heard about the Roombas. It is a cleaning system. It is an automatic cleaning system that employs IoT. For example, you just set a reminder on it that every day at 9 a.m. you have to clean the whole um, room. It, you just deploy it on one uh, specific point and it maps down every inch of your room and cleans it and mops it for you. That is the, the Roombas, that, uh, the picture that I have put in is a very old now the Roombas is very uh, uh, advanced and if you want to buy them um, they are very uh, cheap as well so i guess all of you can free your maids of some work the second is automatic automatic guest system so if you want uh, if you are not at home and some guest pops up at your home and you uh, you have some time to come back Eventually, uh, you'll have to ask them to wait. But with an automatic guest system, you can uh, ask them for the password, and they can right away enter in your home uh, with some speech recognition uh, tool that your house may have. Now, all of these things are the basis of smart homes. Uh, it, they are not real, uh, uh, limited to it, but a smart home should have these things and many more things uh, that I, I may not even tell you about. So it's up to us as engineers to think about it, to employ how we can uh, benefit ourselves in a smart home. The third is automatic coffee maker. I, I guess all of us have seen uh, it in the movies. Uh, it was in, I think, John Wick. Uh, he had automatic uh, coffee maker, and that movie was in 2014. So uh, that's not a, a hard thing, thing to believe in. And one of the most interesting parts about smart homes is the smart lighting. Um, I think smart lighting is the best feature that uh, anyone can have. If, if it's a party, you can uh, increase your lighting. If it's, uh, if it's a birthday, you can change your lighting. If it's a movie night, you can change your lighting. So all of these things are being done, and they are even cities in India, yes. There are cities in India that are using smart city technology, and we're going to talk about it in the slides below as well. Smart cities. Smart cities are cities that are built for six purposes. 
The first is for its smart economy. The economy is driven in, in layman's term. The economy is driven by the rule of supply and demand. So, for example, if the supply or the demand of one thing increases, supply has to increase as well. Um, as co coronavirus pandemic happened, uh, the healthcare facilities were eventually increased. Um, so there was a lot, lot of demand, but not enough supply. And as a result, our healthcare crashed in Pakistan and India. And, uh, it's, it was really unfortunate, but that's how it happened. So in a smart economy, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, market crashing or uh, your economy crashing because everything is connected to supply and demand as the uh, the production of one thing will uh, or the demand of one thing will increase the production will also increase the second is the smart people that uh, that uh, contain in the society so uh, i think the main point here is they should embrace creativity if, if they are not creative enough if they are not reluctant to change as was the case with us 200 years ago uh, in general pakistanis and indians we were the subcontinent uh, and it was really tough for us because we did not embrace change and creativity third up is smart mobility uh, mind you there are cities built on just one purpose and that is smart mobility smart mobility is a very vast domain and smart cities are doing a, a brilliant job in uh, in uh, integrating uh, the the mobility services with a smartness of the city then it's the smart living we have health and safety uh, then the smart government our elections should be transparent and should be open that's a very hot topic in pakistan and india even in the us so smart governments are the need i think you know, we'll be seeing uh, a one world government as well uh, in uh, in about a century or so and finally is the smart environment that um, uh, that a lot of people talk about at the united nations but not a lot of people are doing um, some work in it so these are the basis of smart cities now we're going to come to our electrical domain as well what uh, what electrical engineering has to offer to uh, to um, the society and that is a smart grid um, as you may have already learned before this is just a brief overview but a smart grid is an electrical grid which includes a variety of operations and energy measures including smart meters smart appliances renewable energy resources and energy efficient sources so basically a smart grid is an interconnected grid system which has two way um, electricity flow so if you're producing electricity you can sell it to the grid as well and if uh, your electricity runs out you can buy from the grid as well so smart grids have self-healing capabilities and enable electric customers to become active participants um, in Pakistan we are having this uh, hot topic on um, uh, should we have uh, smart grids uh, in our in, an, in our national grid because they are not enabling us to sell to the grid. I think uh, India has this option in, in some of the states where you can, where, sorry, where participants or users can sell to the grid and benefit from that. But in Pakistan, unfortunately, we do not have that till now. Okay, one last thing uh, that I uh, forgot to add or want to talk about uh, is cyborgs. Um, you may have already heard of this term in uh, sci-fi movies but uh, that's uh, not a fiction that is uh, a reality and you can check out a youtube channel named um, i guess robocom um, they produce robots that think like humans so uh, that's just a teaser for you guys you can check out their youtube channel finally we're going to come to our domain and that is iot and renewable energy resources so renewable energy sources that uh, you already know are clean energy sources that produce no carbon footprint and which are not harmful to uh, the environment or they are abundant in nature so when i was um, in in my fourth semester or fifth semester i thought about uh, what other types of electrical energy are there or what other types of renewable energy sources can be made uh, one thing that popped to my mind was uh, there is 
a lot of vehicles on the road and we are not uh, doing our best to integrate those uh, renewable oh, sorry vehicles with our smart grid or our grid so in turn i thought of um, how we can produce electrical energy from roads or from vehicles in in general um, we're going to talk about that but first what is uh, how can iot benefit uh, in renewable energy sources so what i did was i uh, took solar panels and i employed a solar tracking uh, monitoring device that you all may have already done but a solar a solar tracking monitoring device uh, basically this is a small uh, result from my research paper that i'm going to talk about so what i did was i took the solar panel and employed a, a solar tracker in it so as you already know uh, that a solar panel has a tilt angle and an azimuth angle so these two angles are the uh, are the building block for any solar panel if a solar panel is automated with a solar tracker the power output of the solar panel was 32 milliwatts but if sorry 42 milliwatts and if a solar tracker was not employed with the uh, with the uh, solar panel it there was a power output of 32 so there is a 24 percent decrease in power if you don't use a solar tracker there were a lot of uh, other uh, to, to discussions in that paper as well you can uh, check it out on my uh, linkedin but that's just one aspect where iot has enhanced um, the energy production of renewable energy source 24 percent in terms of uh, electrical energy is a big number when uh, when when the main thing is milliwatts so this was our project um, road power generation project uh, the, i made this in my third semester um, uh, i got a research paper out of it as well and this was a very extensive project but just uh, to elaborate with you guys it is to be employed at the corner of a road and it takes wasted wind energy from the vehicles you may have already seen it on facebook or youtube um, there was um, uh, 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 an industry in turkey that was doing this uh, project as well uh, simultaneously to ours it was a very bizarre coincidence but uh, they completed it first so i'm not going to take any credit um, they what they did was they changed the blade design they improved the blade design so their power output was slightly more but uh, as at an undergrad level our project was very advanced and we managed to get a paper out of it as well uh, as you can see the blades uh, have a specific design and they were made out of uh, uh, pvc and uh, that is non degradable non biodegradable sorry and uh, uh, you can use it for uh, you know up to 100 years even more than that so uh, this was a simultaneous energy production device that you can uh, that basically captures the gushes of the wind from a vehicle and produces electrical energy and this was our final year project um, this was elect uh, the project's name was electricity generation uh, using kinetic energy of vehicles. So what we did, what what differently we did in this project was, um, you may have already heard of the speed breaker mechanism, road power generation by speed breaker mechanism. That is a very easy project. Um, a car comes on the road and it just presses the um, um, the unit down. So if a car comes, it uh, it uses its potential energy to produce electricity that is a very easy project what we did in this project was to use the kinetic energy of the vehicles so for example if uh, a car comes and a car steps on it power will be produced and the main uh, good point or the main crux of this project was it uses kinetic energy of the vehicles it used the circular drag of the tires instead of the vertical drag of uh, the vehicles so let me rephrase it once again in urdu or hindi uh, agar aapke paas ye device hai to gaadi uske upar se guzregi aur usko niche press karne ke bajaye 
इसको हॉरिजॉन्टल डायरेक्शन में खींचेगी और जब वो इसको हॉरिजॉन्टल डायरेक्शन में खींचेगी इन टर्न यू विल प्रोड्यूस इलेक्ट्रिसिटी फ्रॉम द मैकेनिज्म बिलो दैट इज एम्प्लॉयड बिलो बोथ ऑफ दीज आइडियाज आर माय रिसर्च पेपर्स यू कैन रीड देम आउट एंड यू कैन इवन कंसल्ट मी हाउ यू कैन मेक और यू कैन एड समथिंग इन दीज प्रोजेक्ट्स योर सेल्फ सो Uh, if there is any question regarding iot uh, you may um uh, type it out i'll uh, dedicate 5 to 10 minutes at the end for that uh, now we're going to talk about why you should opt germany um as uh, as a study uh, destination so why germany uh, germany has a history of innovation and ingenuity um as you may already know max planck uh, and albert einstein Heisenberg, Kirchhoff, Hertz, all of these big physicists, all of them studied at Germany. Um, Albert Einstein, we all know by uh, by his work uh, of relativity. Max Planck, the Planck's constant. Heisenberg for his uncertainty principle. Principle. Kirchhoff for his uh, voltage laws or uh, current laws, and finally Hertz for his um, work in the frequency or time so all of these great scientists were the students at germany and i think uh, germany is a study destination that offers a lot to its young students so um, the, one of the reasons is that the second reason is the invention of the modern university was in germany there were a lot of old universities uh, in our subcontinent and in the arab uh, uh, countries as well but the first modern university the humboldt university that is in the top 100 at the moment as well uh, was in uh, germany and germany has a very high international students ratio uh, about 13% international students study in germany for uh, undergrad post grad uh, uh, education as well the qualification is world renowned uh, uh, next to uk and us they have the most top ranked universities us has the most universities in the top 100 i guess uh sorry top 300 and uh, uh uk has the second most and third is germany and the affordability this is one of the main uh, concerns that uh, led me to choosing germany was the affordability that germany has um you all of you uh, may not belong to very high uh, uh class standard but uh, as a student for me it was not easy to go to canada or U us or uk because uh, to afford a bank statement of up to 50 uh, lakh in pakistani rupees or um 25 uh, 2.5 sorry a million in uh, inr is not easy for everyone so uh, in germany you don't need uh, a lot of um, money it is just uh, 10000 euros and you can um, have 2000 more euros for your initial expenses so there is a maximum of 12000 euros for your study trip and if you want to work you can easily work uh, that is a plus point in germany as well they have very high um uh, work hours work hour rates per hour rates so the types of universities uh, unlike our pakistani or indian universities germany has four types of universities we just have um, universities and applied science universities in pakistan and india but they are generally thought of as the same but in germany they are different so the first are research university the university at um these university at are nine types of universities so um my university um tu dortmund is a technical university generally in germany research university and technical universities are thought of as the same because they focus on coursework more uh, but the fachhochschule is Uh, the university of applied sciences they generally focus more on the diplomas and uh, those types of things and finally the fourth type of universities in germany are the college for arts and music why choose germany as an iot uh, or a study generation is because they have a very high percentage of automation and iot related jobs when i uh, wanted to go abroad i uh, saw job listings and almost one out of three jobs were in germany 
so i definitely knew if uh, if i were to progress as an individual i have to go to germany uh, for a job or a study a visa uh, so i uh, i got enrolled in tu dotman in automation and robotics uh, you all can apply to tu dotman as well uh, in in the in the march uh, intake uh, we're going to talk about how you can build your profile to apply in any university and not get re rejected because it is easy to apply and get rejected and that time will be wasted uh, because you have not planned well before uh, on how to apply to a university so these uh, 15 minutes are very uh, crucial please uh, if you have a pen and a paper you can take it out and you can directly ask your questions as well so germany uh, the iot industry of germany is very advanced and uh, in fact the industrial revolution 4.0 was started in germany um, uh, the the main thing between the industrial revolution and iot is the connectivity and automation so for iot you need to involve sensors in every device you have to put sensors in uh, as small as a people uh, as small as uh, ant sorry uh, you have to put sensors in those as well so there are up to 28 billion interconnected iot devices at the moment 28 billion is a huge figure and uh, considering the figure uh, the uh, europe is responsible uh, responsible for 23 percent of global iot spending and out of the 23 13 percent is uh, responsible uh, germany is respons responsible for it so in automation and uh, robotics in iot in the industrial revolution germany is unmatched uh, you can uh, tell these figures on their statistical um, website that they have as well. Now, what are the main requirements for Germany? Well, these are very generic requirements that I uh, that I am talking about. We'll going to go into the depth of uh, those later on. But if you have a 16 year of education and you have English or German language proficiency certificate, now. Uh, in, in Pakistan, I don't know about India, but I know a lot of students do the IELTS and uh, GRE, oh, sorry, IELTS and TOEFL in India as they do in Pakistan. But in Pakistan, everyone wants to say, uh, can we get into Germany without the IELTS? So my answer to those people is it, it is a very small investment in your future. For example, $200 uh, dollars is not a very big amount. If you continue to save $1 for uh, any year, you will get $365. So just save that amount and give the IELTS, give the GRE. And trust me, this is a very big investment in terms of uh, your career prospect as well. Third up are the letters of recommendation, letters of motivation, and the GRE. I, I want to talk about the letters of recommendation here. Uh, what what we do as students is um, we go to our professors and say, uh, uh, Mr. X or Dr. X, uh, please give us a recommendation letter. Now, the professor does not have time for you uh, to draft a letter for you uh, specifically. So what he does is he prints out the letter again and again to every student. And the admission committee or the admission uh, uh, office they can sense who, uh, which which letter of recommendation is uh, drafted and which recommendation is general so try and give a draft to your professor first okay uh, sir hamare ye draft hai. please read into it please include these points in your uh, letter of recommendation that you're going to write for us no professor i think uh, uh, asks you to not that they won't send a recommendation letter on your behalf but it's up to you guys to plan ahead of it. For example, for me, it was really embarrassing for me to ask again and again uh, to my teachers to send recommendation letters to uh, the university again and again. So what I did was I drafted a general recommendation letter and kept it with me. And uh, now um, universities that required, now there are two types of universities. One universities require you to send the letters of recommendation directly from the professors. So uh, the university portal will send an email to the professor and the professor will sell, send them the email back. These are one types of universities. The second types of university ask you to put the recommendation letter on their behalf. So uh, you should be ready. You should be ready uh, on, on this point. Uh, and 
th these are very small tips that generally our students lack in but uh, very important uh, in terms of scholarship hunting or admission hunting fourth is the letter of motivation uh, i'm no not going to talk about the ielts and gre a lot because i have an idea that all of you uh, know the importance of it uh, in in general i admitted that indian students are very uh, complex and very uh, uh, intelligent in this uh, manner that they do the ielts gre by the end of their last semester so that's a very good point uh, keep up the good work and uh, make your country proud uh, so the letter of motivation um, i think you should follow the harvard template for letter of uh, motivation the letter of motivation um, is a letter which shows the admission committee that you want to study you, you do not want to come to germany just so you can hang out you can enjoy you know what happens in your field and uh, you know how uh, to study so you can uh, follow the harvard uh, guide to how to write a recommendation or, or how to write a motivation letter and uh, i think a personal statement is needed in some cases but for me it was not needed so these are some of the tips that i think are very 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 necessary for uh, international students that are willing to come to germany um if you have gre and gate scores that just adds to your uh, adds to your profile uh, for me, I did not do GRE till I was admitted in Germany, but uh, I applied in GRE uh, for, for, for Fulbright, but uh, I did not opt for it. Uh, GRE scores are valid for, I guess, five years, so uh, all of that effort will be in your, uh, in, and will not be in vain and in your support. Uh, the Indian uh, entry test gate exams, sometimes the German university accept those as well. So please read the university admission uh, requirements if they ask you for the gate score you can provide that as well second tip and i think this is the reason that i am deliver, del delivering this talk to you as well um, is universities love research papers universities love publications if you have a percentile um, as Naman earlier mentioned, if you have a percentage of 70 and your colleague or your uh, fellow class fellow has a percentage of 81, and if you have two research papers at the percentage of 70, I can assure you, you your profile will be much heavier or much uh, uh, easier to get in than the, than the person who just has a profile a percentage of 81. So trust me, publications are a very important uh, uh, publications hold a very important uh, uh, rule or you know uh, they have a very important uh, part in in your build, uh, career building and finally choose the university according to your previous research i have seen a lot of students uh, they completed their bachelor's in mechanical engineering and now they want to switch to chemical engineering or electrical engineering so please don't do that if you want to switch uh, your field do your masters in uh, your home country because it is difficult for you to get in germany uh, if you want to change your university research um, now the concern for students is that sir hame to admission mil gaya ab ab kya masla to masla ye hai ki jab aap visa ke liye apply karoge to they ask you if you have changed your uh, your bachelor's so for example, if you say I uh, I completed my bachelor in electrical and I'm now going in a program with uh, civil background, uh, they will be hesitant to give you a visa because they will think that you will not be able to complete the studies and you will come back to your home country or you will slip in their country. So they uh, hesitate in giving the visas to students uh, on that matter. Admission process in universities, German universities, is comparatively very easy. You just have to go to the home page of the university and most of the universities have a specific portal that they use and that is um, the UniAssist. So you send your documents by post to UniAssist, they check your documents and they send your documents uh, on your behalf to the universities as an intermediary body. So uh, you should al always know what the deadlines are and at least apply two to three months before uh, for me my university did not require uh, the documents to be sent by post it was an online um, uh, portal 
so check that as well uh, apply in tu dotman i will be happy to uh, uh, talk to you if you get in i uh, hopefully a lot of people will you get uh, will get in uh, in that university so this is all um, thank you so much for joining i am now coming on please So if anyone have any question then you may ask Mirsad and you can take benefit of his experience Naman uh, hi Mirsad uh, hi again, uh, just a quick question i wanted to ask uh, sops which are statement of purpose right yes and, uh, like shortlisting universities and meeting the deadlines so there are there are consultancies for that right so yes. uh, what would you suggest because i think consultancies are more of a time saving those can these people can save you a lot of time which you could really put into other things so um i don't sure. think so and uh, naman uh, i am a very anti uh, consultancy thing because i think you will be paying a hefty amount to them just to get an admission in a university that you can do on your own personally i got admitted to six universities in europe i just applied on their portal i just send documents to those universities it is a really easy job uh, to apply I, i applied in six and i got in six that was my ratio so i think uh, as a student uh, with uh, you know so much uh, potential uh, you should apply uh yourself you should not rely on consultancy services a because um the the percentage of fraud is very high uh, in pakistan i have seen a lot of students um who who you know uh, they waste their money by applying in these firms i will highly recommend you to apply um yourself but if if there is someone who uh, you trust you can go to him but i would recommend not to go to him the the universities are very easy the process is very easy you just have to you know uh, keep poking in uh, and completing uh, what is required uh, there is an, a not a lot of uh, difficulty in applying right uh, also i had this query uh, uh, now there are two kind of uh, courses offered in germany in the english yes. taught and the german taught right yes so i've heard that the, the english taught program is a little tougher to get into and while the german ones are a little easier yes that is the case because the german applicants uh, their their seats go unwanted a lot of seats uh, do not get filled because there are so many universities and there are so many programs it is only wise for them not to fill the seats i think uh, getting into a in an english taught program is not difficult as well um uh, if you apply to at least four universities in germany i think you can get into one good university and uh, always choose the university according to your profile so uh, if my profile is very uh, uh, i i would say low i would not apply in tum or rwth so i think it is important for students to know uh, at what level do they stand on uh okay also uh, another query that is related to the language german so uh, how do you suggest we should go about learning it we should learn it before or after getting into the university because if we learn it before then we can uh, drastically uh, like suppress the, the amount of homogeneity will be surrounded by in germany we can really interact with different kind of people the language barrier um, wouldn't be there trust me trust me learning german is uh, is one of the bases um, to be happy in germany because a lot of students uh, go, come to germany and they're like we can't speak german now and uh, if you go uh, there there was one incident when um, a friend of mine went to the grocery store and he was like uh, what is how, how much is this and the german was like uh, this is not uk this is germany and he felt so embarrassed that he never talked in english to any uh, anyone in germany he, he tried and spoke in uh, the broken german that he may speak so i think learning german is very important and i think as students you should enroll in goethe institutes or 
the bodies that are recommended on the German con consulate websites. Uh, please check those. I don't know uh, if a Goethe Institute is in 